Hey guys, Quicksilver Gaming here, bringing you another episode of Ultimate General American Revolution. This is episode 10 of our Let's Play. If you missed episode 1, I'll put a link in the top right hand corner to that episode. But we are starting this episode off pretty well. We sent out our fleet. They are not in great condition. I did a, you know, take care of a few different small ships to, to gain some rep and try to clear out our coast, but we found a 48 gun ship again so we already have one we captured it last episode and this is another one that we absolutely want to capture the more 48 gun ships we have in our fleet the better and the more likely we are to eventually take a third reef on the sea map this is not too shabby either we have the wind behind us of course uh their ship oh no their ship is heading toward us so it does not have the wind and they don't have many crew on their ship 348 Whereas Indefatigable has 528, so we should be able to just capture the ship if we can get a boarding engagement. I've changed every single ship over to Grape Shot, so we deal the least amount of damage possible to their ship. Now, unfortunately, uh, Indefatigable will take some damage going in, but the goal here is to just literally go in for the kill, um, and that is to board them. Because if we can... If we can take this very, very quickly, then that'll be absolutely amazing. So just need to basically aim directly at the ship, see if see if it'll turn in a way. Oh, that's going to be a pretty nasty broadside. It wasn't too terrible, to be honest. Um, interesting that it's able to go a lot faster than us, even though we have the wind behind us. So that's really unfortunate. We really need to try and cut off the ship. And this is proving to be quite difficult. Yes, please shoot the 30-gun ship. Come on, let's continue moving forward. I wonder if they are at full sails too. I don't really know. Um, man, very, very difficult. Oh, we're not at full sails over here. So let's, let's try and get up beside it. Come on, keep moving. And Providence is just getting absolutely annihilated. Um, but the sooner we can get up next to this ship, the better. And then we have... Oh yes, perfect. Did you just turn exactly how we need? Come on, go down. Yes! Grappled, perfect. All right, that should be the win right there. A lot of damage. We are boarding them. You can see the numbers there. We have nearly a two to one advantage. We should capture this ship and that should be game over. Now, it's a lot of lost men on our side, that is for sure. And they are fighting till the end. But there we go. HMS Prince Royal, mine. Okay, just looking at the at the map at what we know, I, I, I think there's a little pause. So it looks like there aren't any British ships down here. I'm not sure if that's true or not. But we need to get to New Haven. New Haven is our best port. Absolutely want to get to New Haven. Get out of these horrible waters over here. And then we can reconvene. I might start getting rid of some of our really badly hurt 30-gun ships. The ones that have really bad hull damage. Because we are, we're, we're really, really tight on money. Um, we're, we're actually really struggling in that department. We're trying to build, you know, fur traders wherever we can. They'll, they'll take like nearly a year in certain parts. I'm not really sure I want to try over here, but I can certainly try. We, we spent about a month on level two of intelligence. And that just completely wrecked our economy. Um, I have stated this before. The, the sabotage events in this game, they really need to lessen them. Fort Stevens was lost again and I retook it, but it wasn't really worth showing the battle because it's just three militia on their end. So I've lost Fort Stevens twice and Fort Frederick once in this campaign. And uh, Fort Stevens, or was it three times in Fort Stevens? I don't know. Even with higher intelligence levels, I'm losing Fort Stevens a lot. So I went and put a garrison in there. It feels like the British just have an absolute... Oh, no, let's not do that. Um, like, they, they have a mission to take Fort Stevens, so it's, it's very frustrating in that department, but this is kind of where we sit. We've been moving men about 
We've been reducing our production a little bit because we're really struggling on money. We have lots of civilian muskets in the bank. We have these United States muskets, so we should probably um, probably equip a few more militia with them. And I think I was doing Fort Ticonderoga was where I wanted to go with more um, United States muskets. So we don't have quite enough to do another another after that, but the the more the more militia we can equip with those, the better. And then as far as as far as our market, what we're doing over here, so we got rid of all the six pounders and four pounders. We have three regiments worth of three pounder galloper guns. I could get rid of this four pounder. I, I'm thinking of restarting four pounder production soon. Um, once we can kind of get our economy a little bit more stabilized. We still have tons of provisions, tons of ammunition, which is really good. Textiles, I dropped it to eight. I sold the extra wagon and then furs. I like to keep two because you do actually need furs to create guards regiments, uh, which is rather interesting because I don't actually wear bear skins, but I'm guessing the game is like, ah, you know, guards, let's do that. So, and then these are where we're at over here. So we can't really sell any more resources. I like to keep a good amount of them. I could technically sell some civilian muskets. That is a potential option, but I do like to have, you know, a reserve. Not that we have any officers and the ships are absolutely killing me in the officer department, which is another setback of the Navy. But the more you can get the Navy going out, the, the better your economy is going to be because you can see just like there was a 51, a 40, you can really get a lot of ships coming your way now. This is going to be pretty disgusting once they enter port, um, but hopefully they can... <laughs> and then you, you'll see like a train of wagons eventually going down here, which will also be pretty interesting as it tries to it tries to put enough troops down here to to replenish these. Okay, so HMS Royal Prince. Oh wow, and it's a three star. So that is absolutely phenomenal. And then I don't, I've never seen the last one. So I'm kind of thinking, oh man, plus 20 sailing would be really good. Rotation speed, uh, gunnery, boarding, willpower, accuracy, reload speed, sailing. I really like boarding though. Um, and that's kind of what these ships are for. I think our, when, when we get like 60 gun USS Constitution class frigates or uh third rate ships then we'll definitely go for some of those other things there okay so we are we're in the negative we absolutely need this and then no absolutely not this is a bad offer okay so we're we're in the negative again really really bad and that's this is the problem i'm having and this is why i get very frustrated on the discord when people you know, talk about like, oh, it's just so simple, just up your intelligence level, and you're like, but the economy isn't built out in this game yet properly, so you have to sell off resources, which is fine, but, and I think I've built my economy pretty well. Uh, if you look at a lot of my stuff, oh, this is perfect, that's a lot of money right there in all of those furs, but even then, you see I'm still kind of struggling here with with keeping uh, staying in the positive now i did say i was going to look at some of these ships and possibly get rid of some of the ones that i don't necessarily need um and i'm not entirely sure y you look at like the damage this one the uss providence is really really beat up minus 628 that might be one of the worst ones there so there's a possibility that i i get rid of Oh, like Lizard, but Lizard has so many men on board, but that also has some big guns on there. So there's there's some potential of me deleting some of these ships, um, That that's definitely for sure. But having all of these ships also really helps out the auto resolve, and that really helps out farming the reputation. So it's, it's kind of a catch-22, but this is a lot of, a lot of maintenance on these ships. So I'll, I'll have to really think about it. So it's nearly February. We did end up getting rid of those two 18, 18 gun ships. We just absolutely needed the money. We're, we are hemorrhaging money so badly right now. And those sold for like 30,000 
continentals combined and that was that was pretty important to stabilizing our economy and I, I think our fleet looks pretty good with two of those 48 gun ships in them I'm, I'm pretty pretty happy with that I moved around some some officers too so that uh USS Indefatigable and now USS Washington I didn't like uh Royal Prince that didn't sound like a very American name to me so it's uh it's named the Washington I, I I think they'll be a lot better now that they have better officers also just did a you know cleaning up around and then added a few more a few more upgrades to our towns here and there oh 2200 I like that and then a bunch of relation stuff not that that is very important um so we are slowly but surely replacing the civilian muskets in our militia with U.S. muskets. I think I have Fort Frederick and Hubbardton to go. I think Fort Stevens there. Yeah, they even have a six-pounder there. And then this, this regiment at Hartford eventually will become regulars. I think I could actually... What is... It, it, it comes down to our guns. I need more Virginia 76s, which we're actually really really close and we're building 21 per day so I could I could actually upgrade these guys right now and then you're a fine officer not the greatest officer but you're a fine one and then we will upgrade to fusiliers here and then hit upgrade that's a lot of our officers gone and then what we're doing is Virginia 76s are the way to go here and then we just need to start upgrading this unit all the way. So we'll go Fusiliers, Fusiliers, Artillery, 6-pounder Field Gun, Add, and then Guards. There we go. Love to see the Guards and Add. And our Officers will badly, badly deplete. But what I'm trying to do here is build up a force for when New York opens up. It's going to be... Uh, I think it's August of 1776, the New York Theater opens up, and there's a lot of redcoats that that invade New York. I think it's about 20,000. It's pretty rough. Uh, what is Gilbert doing? That is... need to take a peek over here. I just noticed there's, there's a little bit of movement by the British. I need to make sure that there's nothing that's... Uh, you know, too crazy going on over there, but we'll see. Okay, hopefully we can take out, what is that, 30, 30 gun ship, and there's something over here too, so we'll try and take, take that out over here. I can see it right there. That's perfect. Have to check where Gilbert's going. I feel pretty good about Fort Lavelle right now because they have those U.S. muskets, so I feel like we can hold out pretty well. I will definitely accept gifts more sabotage holy cow um as i as i said we we are on tier one so we're at minus 30 percent and we're just getting hit by sabotage events all the time absolutely all the time i was told that i had a very small sample size um it's it's been two campaigns in a row where just absolutely decimated by sabotage events and you can see here i do have intelligence level one i can't afford intelligence level two it just absolutely drains the economy so that was one of the lesser sabotage events, but I have, I don't know how many officers we've lost in total. Ooh. Okay. This is interesting. I think we can take it, but this will be really tough. I think we need to basically sacrifice our 28 and 30 gun ships into the ship and then try and get our two 48 gun ships in a way that they can... They can like double board this. If we can capture a 78 gun ship, that would be amazing. Because this is, I mean, this is, this is like it. That, that's a, that's a very large third rate. On the sea map, of course, our, our positions are absolutely dreadful for what we want to accomplish. Having these two ships out on their own just means that they'll basically die. Um, because it's a third rate ship facing down. I, th this game absolutely needs to figure out deployment so much better than it does. I, I, That and army organization are literally the two worst aspects of this game, and I think they're completely fixable, which um, they, to me, they absolutely have to fix them. So hopefully we can get this ship to, 
to go straight toward our two ships and hopefully these two ships can kind of get the heck out of dodge actually if you can go around that way that would be great oh man providence you are that is not good i mean that is that is what a third rate does can we please please get out of there also the fact that you can't start at the the sail that you want to start at is also a little rough but man if providence Providence can get out of there. Come on. It is moving so slow. It is painful how slow it is moving. We can get their ship to go in between us. This will be perfect. So let's, uh, let's slow this down. No, I need you to... I, I also have all of our ships aiming, aiming at its sails. That's another thing I am doing. I need you to go up here. You to go up here. Come on, quit turning away from me. Uh, it's going to really screw things up here, aren't you? And then we just need a massive shot into its sails. It's shooting our sails, which is not good. Although I think we just did some really good damage. To its sails. Can we get around this side with that ship? And then, oh, we got a grapple. It is not a good angle, though. But man, if we can, if we can get you going, and then match speed. Are you shooting at Providence? I don't know. Come on, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. I need you guys to get up, and I need this ship to absolutely get up as soon as possible because we are going to need so many ships if we can demass them too that would be phenomenal um i am trying my hardest to demass them are you still engaged why are you not boarding yet is the big question like that ship is ship is engaged it should should be boarded any moment now and i have the other ship at match speed come on so painfully slow and the match speed should also be like match match angle how how the enemy ship is sailing like i'm not i'm not good enough of a sailor there we go Okay, can we get this going? Come on, guys. Alright, just fire Grape Shot into it. Move, 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 move. This will be so big if we can capture this. 600. Oh, man. Oh, man. It's double boarding. It's actually double boarding. I've never seen it properly double board before. I think we actually have this. This will be so big. This is so much more exciting than getting the last gun or the last ships. I think we've got it. Okay, okay. Uh, go grape shot. No, 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 no. Don't shoot your own ship. Stop, 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 stop. We got it. We got it. And then you need to board... I need somebody to get on the other ship. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Everybody slow down. Stop. I need somebody to get on Indefagatable. You, get on, get on that ship. Oh my god, we got a third rate and a big third rate. 78 gun uh, third rate is a really big third rate. That is awesome. There, there are like 60, 68 guns in this game, and I think there might be even something a little bit smaller you guys have no idea how excited i am to get a 78 gun ship that is amazing and there's hardly any damage to it and it'll be three star that is so insane what is over here and there's a couple british ships i feel like we need to get back to port and recrew our ships because once we recrew we're now unstoppable i literally can't express how huge that is getting a 78 gun ship just uh, now the navy it, it's unlocked it's game over for the british i mean they have first rate ships but now we can really 
really push the, the evil part of the scheme. What is Gilbert doing, though? That is the big question. Like, where where is Gilbert going? I mean, you're perfectly welcome to walk over a mountain, uh, like, pretending that you're Hannibal, losing all of your men. Oh, boy. Okay, formal enlistment. Faced with a shortage of manpower and pressing need for additional troops to the Continental, Congress makes a controversial decision to allow enslaved individuals to enlist in the Continental Army. Enslaved individuals who choose to enlist are promised freedom for their service and are integrated into existing regiments. Enlisting enslaved individuals as soldiers will provide the Continental Army with a larger pool of potential recruits. But then it says sabotage right here. Enlisting enslaved individuals as soldiers will exacerbate existing social and racial tensions within society. Let's try this sabotage. I don't know what that means. But I'm I'm all for giving people their freedom. Two 18 gunships here. Um, I mean, we can try to capture them and then sell them. Or we could rep grind. We're just going to rep grind. Uh, the the money would be amazing right now, but I, I just want to, to grind that rep, get through this. Where did all of these ships come from? We went this way. That's pretty crazy. But yeah, just, um, I mean, it's not going to be a lot of reputation, but it's some. And I, I do like the reputation. I value reputation quite a lot. What are these other ships in here? Two ships equaling 36 guns. So it's another two 18-gun ships. If we engage them, we could probably... Could we, could we seek them out and try and kill them? Otherwise, sailing to port is the, the best thing to do. There we go. Two more 18 gunships. Reputation. This, this is always a toss-up. Like, I really like the reputation, but we could definitely do with the money right now. So I, I think because we just defeated two, let's go take this battle here. All right, this looks perfect. We're going to send our three battered ships away from this fight. USS Lizard is right on an angle to intercept hopefully we don't have the wind going for us which is a big bummer but we do have four ships that have more crew than the enemy i might have to have uss lizard grab the second ship now i think about it because uh, that ship is just going right on by um you're more than welcome to shoot at me let's uh let's try and grapple with you and we are just firing grape shot too, um, because I don't want to sink them. I want to, I want to capture them, and our sails are just in really. Oh no 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 no! Oh shoot! Okay, this is not going well because of because of the wind direction. But I I think we can, I think we can do it. Let's see if you can, you can slow down. That would be great and get a perfect angle and then your oh you you pulled away okay let's try with you and then let's try here with you these ships are uh amazing at maneuvering that is for sure why didn't you why didn't you grapple it oh man dude come on you gotta grapple. Alright, there's one grapple. Hopefully. As I said, I would really like them to work on the ability to grapple enemy ships. Uh, this one is basically throwing its colors. <laughs> but not, not quite. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Grapple, grapple, grapple. Uh, you didn't get the... Well, you got a little bit. Is it going to break? Looks like it's going to break. Ah, crap. Okay. <laughs> uh... Alright, grab that. You're good. And then... Three ships chasing one. This'll be... This'll be tough, because... Their ship seems to be faster than us by a country mile. Thankfully, it's got really, really itty-bitty guns, so it's not, like, even though it's getting a lot of damage off, it's not really doing much. 
All right, make sure everybody is targeting this ship and they have it on grapple. And then this will be really painful as we try and try and grab it. So you two can go off into the distance. Doesn't really matter. And then over here, just trying to... No, we'll slow down. Need to get that grapple. Oh, and then it's... Man, it is really good at changing speeds, changing directions. Come on, dude. Okay, let's see if this grapple actually works. USS Lizard is boarding. Holy cow. That was insane. That ship was absolutely insane getting away. Um, hopefully that was worth it for the for the money because we're we're just bringing these back to port and selling them. We got the first two 18 gun ships and got the rep from them, so I figured the next two that's let's just grab them and sell. Them. So let's have these ships sail to port, and as soon as they get into port, I am I need to pause the game and actually work on work on this fleet a little. So. I, I'm going to sell off these two and then work on this and then we'll be back in a moment. Okay, I mess around with the fleet. As you can see, I, I've got disbanded the two 18-gun ships out. Welcome to USS Quicksilver. So it's a third-rate Bellona class or Bellona class ship of the line. It does have 9-pounders, 18-pounders, and 32-pounders. I wonder if you can upgrade those to something bigger. Like, I would just like 32s. 24s and 18s but they are different decks so there's i know historically your different decks had different size guns because of the size of the deck i'm assuming or maybe it was just the pressure exerted on the ship i'm not entirely sure but man i am so excited about this ship but i wanted to show you um so when you when you sell a ship you i, I guess i already disbanded it but if you wanted to sell uss lock ah you would double click on the ship and click this skull icon right here and it disbands the ship, you know, puts the, the crew uh, back into your pool and the officers and all of that. But then you go into your market and you go under ship. You'll see here we have HMS Stag and HMS Windsor, which we could, if we really wanted to, we could, we could, you know, choose the ship and create it because it's in our storage. And this is kind of like when you buy a ship, you do the, or build a ship, you do the same thing. You'll go in your storage, and then you have to commission it, basically, or um, get it actually prepped for, for combat or for sailing, I, I should say. So you go into the market, go into ships, and then you sell. So this one's only 5,500, and this one's 5,300, so not not fantastic. Um, those Those ships that you get for free from the US. I think their prices are incorrect. You can sell those for like 17, 15,000, but you know, I'll take 11,000 right there and then we gained a bunch of rep. We're at 62. We do have frigates down to 57. We have reorganization down to 46, which that is really tempting um, because that is a third general. That is actually really, really tempting to get the third general, but we'll wait a little bit longer. It's not... The third general, what I would do is I would have Quicksilver over here. I would have good old Benedict Arnold. I'd move him over to where he belongs in Fort Ticonderoga, Fort Frederick. And then I'd have Baron Von Steuben in the mountains over here. But more importantly, when, when New York opens up, what that gives me is I can put two generals. I can put like one general over here, one general in the, in the western area, and then one general down here to, to help prevent or deal with the new york menace it'll be down there so that is sort of the plan there but uh i can't tell you guys how happy i am to get a 78 gun third rate ship uh i am absolutely useless at at doing the naval combat i have been practicing so much i edit out it um i, I know people don't like save scumming but i feel like because i'm still learning the game it's a new game it has balance issues and that i save a lot because i don't want especially doing youtube i don't i don't want the series to randomly like explode or there to be a big bug that just like ends the series early the idea of this series is not to show off how good i am it's to show you guys what content is in the game right now and the idea is that we get to uh june 15th of 1777 which is the current end date of the campaign 
and show you guys the New York theater. And I want to show you what is up with the game. So that's why I save a lot. And some of these naval battles, I will admit, I do like five or six times. And some of these episodes are taking hours upon hours for me to, to record. Because I am just bashing my head into the naval part of this game. So that I can bring something enjoyable to you guys. Um, as I said, I'm not doing this to show how good of a player I am. We could probably do that in a stream later or do like a challenge campaign or an Iron Man campaign later. That That's fully acceptable or and something I think would be fun. I'm not that good anyways, but uh, as I said, this, this campaign is about showing off the content of this game. So I, I'm so excited. What is this little ship down here? Um, a 30 gun ship. So that's, that's pretty cute. We need, we need crew. Crew is the big thing right now. And we'll start to, you know, oh, New Haven has 1,744. So you can see all this crew pretty low. And that's because we had to waste a lot grabbing that 78 gun ship. Although it worked so much better than before. I think, I think by making these 48 gun ships really good at boarding, it, it allowed those ships to last long enough to where the other 48 gun ship could help out taking the 78. So I, I'm stupid excited. Once again, I believe the Redcoats are going to Portsmouth. So this will be the like 80th battle of Portsmouth by the looks of it. It is three regiments to three, so I do need to pay attention to that. And I do need my forces to get there in time and that way we can have a proper engagement over here so let's get quicksilver down here um i wish there was a different way to to get line of sight of the battlefield can we just move over here quicksilver what are you doing i would like you to to properly i don't know why it has to take a really weird way to portsmouth so I, I would like these guys, I would like Gilbert to get down here. That would be very preferable. So we'll we'll let that go for just a little bit longer. Um, I don't need copper, so I don't need to increase tension. I don't exactly know what tension does right now. But let's, uh, let's take this battle. So it's uh, some Canadian militia. Know that their militia has five slots. I really hope that in the future the American militia... You can have larger militia regiments. I, I would really like that as opposed to being capped at four. And then uh, two, two infantry, each with a cannon versus our infantry. I think we should easily win this battle. Yeah, nice little village to... Or farm, I should say. It's not really a village. Quite, quite nice buildings. I, I do like a lot of their assets. I wish you could garrison the buildings. That'd be pretty cool, but, you know, that's... Uh, it's not a super important thing to want, but would be would be pretty cool. Now, if you guys could maybe move just a little bit forward, that would be perfect. And then get you get right in that gap there, and I think our our line will look pretty pretty awesome. So let's let's put you guys on hold, and then let's grab you guys maybe. Might need a little bit more of a flanking force. I'm not entirely sure. The center is always important. And then Quicksilver move up. Could probably shift you guys out on the flank a little bit more. And you guys over there. I, I like to have a line that... Okay, I don't actually like where you guys are right now. I like to have a line that's not super, super thin. That is That is very important to me. All right, cannons, I need you to start opening fire. Okay, I think you guys are good to, to press hold now. And I think we could probably grab a, a three-man line here. And support it with two. And then grab you. All right, cannons are opening fire, which is perfect. This group in the center getting a little beat up, so let's make sure Quicksilver's nearby. And then out on this flank, I think we could, you know, start moving some guys up on the flank. I think that is a, a fine, fine idea over there. I think you guys could hit hold and you, and then probably move you out on the flank a little bit more. 
I've decided I don't like artillery on hold because then they don't rotate properly and it's it's really weird but their artillery is also shooting our artillery which is kind of a kind of a bummer to be honest um, good old counter battery fire and you okay that's not working there we go that worked that time Right, this this group is taking a few too many casualties for my liking, so let's retreat you. Okay, you guys need a hold. And then once you guys get into position, I'll hit the hold button for you. I mentioned this in was it this episode, previous episode, about the hold button. I there are definitely times where you want to use it, and there are definitely times where you don't want to use it. And it's when when you're trying to to attack guys that might not be in your in a in a great firing arc. Like right now, these guys could probably come off hold because we need to rotate a little bit. And our our enemy is not directly in front of us. You guys need to retreat out of there and move up. And then you guys move up, and then hopefully you're in range to shoot people and then you guys can move up there and we'll probably actually have you two pull pull there man we're taking a beating in the center even though we've got all of this artillery in the center that is artillery that is not deployed but i don't know it's a little risky to go and attack it right now and now it's deployed so that is that's always a problem I didn't see if we broke that, um, but we do need to push up just a little over there, and then these guys can push up over there, and then probably have you guys combine. You guys need to come help out this way. You're probably going to have to replace them in a moment, and over here feels like we're doing well, um, but there's definitely definitely more British this time around. Than last time, that is for sure. I keep Quicksilver with his little aura over here, and then yeah, that's that's not going well. Whoever sits right here, it's not going well, and it's just because there's a lot, a lot of red coats. To be honest, All right? Can we can we get up here and attack them a little bit better? I would like to form this line a little bit better than what we currently have. And then if we can get this artillery maybe firing. I think this is fine. I don't like that artillery over there, but you know, there's not a heck of a lot we can do at the moment. Man, our guys are exhausted, which is rather unfortunate. I wonder if they can charge over there. These guys are not exhausted, but that is... That is militia, so I wonder if we can get a volley off. They're nearly shattered. Can you guys run into position? Because you have the condition to do so. If we can if we can shatter them, that'll be very, very handy. Over here, I'm not I'm not really liking what's going on on this front, so let's do a little bit of a refused flank. Just pull back a little bit and get into position. Those guys are more fresh. Probably need you guys to retreat. Would really like those guys to shatter. And I feel like we could probably... Alright, they've fully routed. Which is kind of what we needed. So let's move you guys forward. And then you guys can move up like so. And then you guys can move up to engage them. And then sit back over here. So I'm just rotating my units in and out where needed. I don't know. Condition isn't like the biggest thing, but it, it is important. We lost a, uh, a gun over there. We lost a gun over here too. So the enemy artillery really, really actually doing a number on us this time around, which is not good. You, you don't want to see that. We really need to break them, but the British are kind of... Kind of like sitting back a little. Oh no, no, that was not what I wanted to do. I need you guys to move up. I need you guys to move up this way. 
think that'll that'll be great. I think you guys could go on hold. You guys could probably go on hold. Um, you guys staying on hold over there, perfect. Um, I don't want to do hold there because there's guys coming around that direction. We are taking a lot of damage though. And somebody surrendered. Can we get this unit through this little gap? That's the... There we go. I think we did it. Interesting that they surrendered. I like how easy it is for the enemy to surrender nowadays. It's a lot easier than it used to be. It used to be really difficult to get the enemy to surrender. Very, very difficult. See, this is what I'm talking about over here. That would have not been a good hold. And then we are... This flank is not going well. So we need to get out of there. And I keep hitting the fallback button, but they're not... They're not falling back. Come on, fall back. You're going to take rear rear hits because you're not falling back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You took rear attack system. Oh, well, they really tried to rescue their guys. So that's that's interesting to to see there. Let's just pull these guys back in case the enemy does something funny. And then over here, um, we probably need to combine you two. And then over here, Quicksilver probably needed on this flank the most. We're, we're really struggling over there. And then we should move this cannon forward. And then move move this regiment up a little. Can't actually see the, the color thing. And then we'll move you guys forward where I think you should go. And then move you guys up where I think you should go, and then you'll be sort of a reserve. And then let's speed things up a little. I said you guys should combine. Alright, the British are starting starting to fall back in mass. It's not perfect, but there's another surrender. No 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 no, they got their guy back. That should be pretty good over here. Let's move you guys up a little. And then, yeah, I feel like we're we're at the point where it's looking, looking pretty, pretty good for us. Let's pull you guys back. And then you guys can go over here. It's just this artillery. Oh, the artillery got off their cannons? Oh, are they mortars? What are those things? I think those are mortars. So that's good to know. Whereas those actually are proper proper cannons. Yeah, those look like they're mortars. So that's that's pretty cool to see. Can we do we have any condition over here? Can you guys charge into that? That would be that would be great. And then over here, we have another surrender, but then they surrendered back, so at the end of the day, it didn't really do anything. Let's move you up. Move you up. You'll you'll sit behind. You guys can combine and then move you guys up over here. So perfect. They surrendered. Get them get them out of there. Move you guys up on that flank. This is a this is a pretty bloody battle to be honest. Um I was not expecting this one to be this hard, but I I mean, you know, it's always always good to have some sort of a challenge. But might have been how we deployed, I'm not entirely sure. And then come on, let's let's wrap this up. British are being really, really stubborn over here. Alright, can you get into that gap and you guys come back? There we go. Okay. I need you guys to charge the artillery. And I need you guys to charge that artillery. And I need all of you to stop shooting. And then you guys can charge over there. And then we'll see how much we can capture. So this is what I recommend at the very end because it doesn't... Your condition at the very, very end doesn't matter as much. And that was a lot of captures. We're not going to capture the rest, so that was pretty good. If I do say so myself. On the strategic map, one of their units surrendered immediately. 
Uh, they're down to 90 and 147, so that's always good to see. I don't think they will... Oh, they surrendered. Okay. Just as I was like, I don't think they'll surrender anymore. We got a, a bunch of bunch of surrenders, so let's go capture all of this equipment. And then that'll probably be it for this episode. So that was a pretty awesome episode. We we got that. We got the 78 gunship. That was absolutely amazing. That's that's so big for us. Absolutely monstrous, to be honest. And then uh, Quicksilver, you can go out over here. Richardson, we did lose a lot of men right there, but I think uh, we'll we'll be able to recover. It's I I prefer the British, you know, bleeding themselves dry. We can recover a lot a lot easier than they reco can recover. So let's let's pull these men into Portsmouth. Figure out who goes. So it's um Columbus. Yeah, Columbus. So Columbus will go back to Salem. Richardson, you can join the garrison. Let's take a quick peek at our market. So we've got a bunch of brown besses. As far as United States muskets, we have a few. Virginia's a few. So we might be short on guns for a little while here. We have a ton of materials. So I will go ahead and fix up our infrastructure. I think that's uh, important. Um, you can see here we're we're building building a lot. I would like a blacksmith's house over here in Salem. I think they just queue up, but I'm fine with that. It stops me from forgetting. And I would really like a carpenter shop in Boston so we can increase that port over there. And that leaves us with not a lot, um, not enough to do a college. You can see like we're doing pretty well in terms of building up our infrastructure, which is why the economy stuff drives me nuts. Like you can't fund intelligence to the point where you can effectively uh, reduce the sabotage events um because and i don't know the, i know these will take forever i i know but whatever there i i had the extra they, they cost like 500 continentals and a little bit of something else over here i do want a fur trader's house and then fort lavelle so that is what our economy looks like we have seventeen thousand, mostly thanks to and officers are killing us um, yeah, let's give them that. But we have we have that money mostly thanks to capturing a bunch of ships, which is perfectly fine. This is what this is looking like. I think we should probably scale back the Virginia muskets. Yeah, let's do something like that. Just so we can get the United States muskets out. We're down some six-pounders because of that battle. Brown Bess is looking pretty good. We have tons of civilian muskets. So we could always sell those. We've had, we have some leftover six pounders to so get those guys into Salem. And that'll be it for today's episode. So as usual, we're on an officer shortage. Mostly, I think a lot of it, our officer shortage problems has to do with um, boarding engagements on ships. You lose a lot of men and a lot of officers. But obviously, you know, we're, we're dealing with a very aggressive British army during the winter. However, they're not that aggressive because they're only sending, like, three regiments at a time. Maybe it's because I only keep two in Portsmouth and I have the one in Salem, so it makes it look like there's two. But officers will be a a big thing moving forward. But yeah, I'm, I'm feeling good about the campaign. Hopefully we can get out of winter soon. So that's it for today's episode. Please like, comment, subscribe. All of that YouTube jazz greatly helps out the channel. I absolutely love reading your guys' comments. They mean a lot to me. You guys don't understand. Um, and then we're on the road to a thousand subscribers. We have gained a lot of subs uh, since I started recording this in mass again. You guys seem to really like this. I will get the next campaign going that's not this game. Uh, you guys voted for the American Civil War or Ultimate General American Civil War Confederate campaign using the GMP mod. It's a big commitment for me, so we'll definitely do it. I might put something in between. But I'm kind of working with the GMP mod, figuring out if I need to change anything on my end. But that is where we stand as a channel. And as always, guys, until next time.